In this video, I'll be giving you a bunch of awesome tips on keywording as well as filtering. You're gonna wanna watch this because keywording is one of my favorite ways to organize images inside of Lightroom and it's incredibly powerful. So let's walk through this entire process. Once again, we are in the library module. I want you to select an image or a grouping of images. Let's go ahead and select these, let's say these images up to this point. So I'm gonna hold down shift and select those first eight images. Now, the first thing I'd say is make your keywords, well, create a structure to them and make them uniform and easy to understand. So, for example, if I type in simply Utah for my keyword right here, because these all these images were shot in Utah, that's not necessarily that descriptive of a keyword. So maybe I'll change that and we can change a keyword by, well, we can do several things. I can type it in right here. So if I want to, I can actually delete this so I can remove Utah by just selecting Utah and deleting it. I can change this to landscape. But once again, landscape is not necessarily that informative. Yeah, I know it's a landscape photo, but that's kind of it. So what if I was actually to create multiple keywords? Well, I could actually have the keyword landscape and you'll look down here on a keyword list and it shows landscape. I could also click the keyword suggestions. So keyword suggestions shows me the most recent keywords and we're gonna talk about the keyword set in just a moment as well. But if I want, I can click Utah and it actually adds it in right there. That's kind of nice. Now I've actually applied two keywords, which is a little bit more defined than simply one. But the thing is, is that Utah and landscape, these kind of go together, right? Because it's a landscape photo and it was in Utah. So what if I want to get a little bit more descriptive and maybe create a structure to my keywords? I could actually go down to my keyword list right here and I could select Utah and drag this right under landscape and check this out. I have now nested Utah as a child keyword under landscapes. And if I want to, rather than just saying landscape, I can right click this and say edit keyword tag and change this to landscapes. So now all my landscapes are in this category. I now have Utah there. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna say these were in Salt Lake. And rather than typing out, I can actually go right here and type out Salt Lake City. But I want that automatically to nest under Utah. I want it to be right here. So what if instead of doing that, I right click and I say, create a keyword tag inside Salt Lake City. And then for these three images, once again, I say LDS Temple. And now that new keyword is now nested under Salt Lake City. So we've just showed you like four different ways of creating keywords. We can go and type it in. We can go down here and we can simply select one of our recent keyword suggestions. We can create a keyword and then nest it underneath something else, or we can right click and actually create a keyword underneath one of these keywords. So now we have child, parent, which is now, well, we have a sub, <laughs> we have, this is, what would this be? The great grandchild? I don't know. This is the original parent. And then we have the child underneath that first parent and then another child and another child. So we have four layers worth of these keywords. Now notice that when I created this keyword underneath, so when I created that keyword tag, it gave me the option actually of including the selected photos, which I had deselected. So it says add selected photos. I deselected that. So the three images here didn't actually get added to this keyword. So what I'm gonna do is click the check mark right next to it. And now I've added that keyword. So now if you notice up here, with the keyword tags, we have landscapes, LDS Temple, Salt Lake City, Utah. Cool. So this nested keyword structure, this hierarchy, Remember when we talked a while back about during the export process, if I press control shift E, there was an option in here under metadata for write, keyword heart, write keywords as Lightroom hierarchy. This will retain that hierarchy. And now this should make more sense to you than it probably did before. So let's deselect that. We don't need to export anything at this moment, but that's how we would do that. So now with these images, well, these are already under the Utah hierarchy. But let's say that I wanted to change this to maybe the Uinta. So what I'm going to do now is right click here. We're going to say create keyword tag inside of Utah. And I'm going to write in the Uinta or just say Uintas. Uintas. 
add to selected photos. So now it's going to add those. And these keyword tag options, make sure that they're included on export, make sure that the export contains keywords and export synonyms. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit create. And now we get a new section. So now we have Utah Uintas. Okay, cool. So now let's go through and see what we do with these. Well, what I might do is put these into a keyword under something else. So let's say that I want these to be, and let's say that I don't need any of these other keywords anymore. Well, I'm going to go ahead and just delete all the existing keywords by clicking in this dialog and then holding or pressing Control A or Command A to select everything in that dialog. And then we're going to change this to fitness. Okay. And then under fitness, I'm going to say that this was done in conjunction with one of our favorite local gyms, the 12. So I'm going to say the 12 movement. I keep hitting my microphone. Sorry about that. Let me move this a little bit. There we go. That's much better. I'm going to say add to. So now under fitness, we have the 12 movement. So if I have other fitness photos that fit into a different gym, I'll do that. Okay, so with these, they're going to be wedding. And you guys get the idea of how these keywords work. We can go and modify as needed, create as many structures as we need. And that's the beauty of them. And this is the other beauty. At any point in time, I can enable my filters by pressing backslash while in the library module. If I go up to text, I can now type in anything. I can say fitness and now just say, I don't want it to search in the file name. I want it to be any searchable field. So now it's going to look at any searchable field and it pulls up my fitness photos. What if I just want images that were taken in the unit Uintas? I can type in Uintas. What if I just want temple photos? I can just type in temple. So that's the beautiful part about keyword is that you can keyword an entire catalog to be whatever you want it to be and then simply use parts of those keywords to find anything. If I want to just find images that I shot with the 12, I just type in the 12 and those are all the images that would be keyworded under that. So keywording is incredibly powerful as a tool. Just remember that to add keywords, you can simply select keyword suggestions from previously used keywords. This is recently previously used keywords. You can add them by clicking the check mark next to them and you can also filter by simply clicking this arrow. So if I click the arrow, notice that it creates a filter for the keyword 12 movement and it loads up just those images. If I create or just click this arrow, it'll show only images that fall into the landscape filter. So it simply automatically creates a filter for that keyword. Okay, which we can then go in and go into sub filters and choose Salt Lake City, or whatever we want to beyond that. So really, really powerful stuff. Now, let's talk about a couple other ways of adding keywords to images. Well, another really cool function that I wish, wish, wish Adobe would update is the keyword sets. One of the ways that we use keywording is we actually keyword an entire wedding based on the wedding day. So for example, we actually will organize based on the timeline. This would be 01 and it'd be bride prep. And then we'll go 02 groom prep, 03 bridal party, 04 groomsman, 05 wedding party, so forth, all the way through the entire night. And we cover that extensively in our workflow course. What I would love, love, love to do is go into this keyword set. And once again, we can create presets for different sections. We can actually create an entirely new set. So I can go to edit set and I can create an entirely new set of these keywords for 01 bride prep, 02 groom prep, 03 bridal party, 04 groomsman, or let's say bride, bridesmaids bridesmaids 05 wedding party 06 ceremony now what this does is and then 07 let's just go formals let's go family formals 08 uh, i'm going to say cocktail hour 09 reception now what this does is when we're culling we actually cull by these different keywords so we'll look at these keywords and cull within these specific groups the problem with a keyword set right now. So if I save this out, I can save my current settings as a new preset or simply update wedding photography, which is what I'm going to do. The problem is I'm limited to nine. Our typical weddings would have around 15 to 20 keywords. And I just wish Adobe would simply update the keyword set to include more 
available slots so I can have 20 or 30 if I want to and simply extend this down. But for a long, long time, they haven't done that update yet. And it would be super, super helpful to photographers because we can create a simple set of keywords and just follow that same structure in every single catalog and have that preset available in every single catalog as is. We have to rename every single time manually. So with this set up, what we could do is then go under and select, let's see, so we select wedding photography and then this is bride prep. And I might go under, I think we have another wedding photo. So this, well, I usually would have a grand exit or something, but right now we'd maybe put it under reception. And then let's see, this would be under groom portraits. But again, we've already used up all of our slots. So we can't have groomsmen, groom portraits and bride portraits and all those kind of things because we don't have enough spots for them. So that's the other way to add keywords is by simply creating a keyword set and then using these little keyword options here. Now, if we go and switch this to outdoors, we have different options available to us. Portrait photography, these are all the standards that come with Lightroom and you can modify or create your own as needed. So that's yet another way of adding keywords. Okay, <laughs> what other ways do we have to add keywords? Let me show you something fun. I'm gonna press T to bring up my toolbar and you'll notice there's a little spray option right here, this little painter option. We can use this to paint on any sort of metadata. So we can paint on attributes like flags. So if we wanna paint on ratings, we can paint on a star label and if I click, it'll paint on a five star label. If I choose this to three, and the cool thing is you can actually click and drag over three images or do whatever you want. If I want to set all these to, let's say I want to set these as keepers. Well, I just set this as a flag and then paint over all three and it does it very quickly. It's nice. You can do that from the grid view and it's fantastic. The other thing we could do is paint on a keyword. So if I want, I could say couples portraits. So let's just say couples, gosh dang it, stop bringing that up. Couples portraits, okay. It brings up the recent keywords and makes that available to us. So I can go through my catalog and I can just shrink this down. I'm gonna go ahead and press uh, backslashes to close down the identity, uh, sorry, the filters. Let's close down the identity plate um, and the bottom panel. And I'm gonna close down the left and right panel as well. Let's just press shift tab to close everything. And then what I can do is just shrink these up and very quickly I can go through and label everything that's a couple's portrait as a couple's portrait. This is kind of not really a couple's portrait. So let's go down here. Uh, let's see, couple's portraits. There you go. And then select those and then all these. So I've now assigned the couple's portrait keyword to all those images that quickly. So if I press tab to bring back my panels, I can see under couple's portraits, if I filter by this, I now have all the images that I just added to that selection. That's a very powerful way of adding keywords quickly to a collection of images and you can do it right from the grid view with that tool. You can add on any attribute, keywords, flags, anything you want with that tool. I love it. It's a fantastic tool. When you're done painting, you simply just drop the paint back into this little tool or you can press escape if you want to escape out of it. Okay. One of the more advanced ways of applying keywords is to set a keyword target and then to use that. Now, I don't use this that much because again, when I'm labeling with keywords, I need to switch my keyword frequently. But what you can do is press Alt, Control, Shift, K or Option, Command, Shift, K. This brings up the set keyword shortcut and you can type in whatever you want. Let's say for this one, I want children's portraits. I'm gonna say set. Now what this does is you'll notice the little plus right next to this. If you right click any of these other keywords, you can actually set it as the keyword shortcut by simply right clicking and then you saying use as keyword shortcut. When you do, the plus goes right next to it. So this simply means that whatever has that plus next to it is your default keyword shortcut. So if I look at all images, and you have to remember that when you select one of these options right here, when I, when I do this, it turns on a filter, okay? So right now I can only see those images in my catalog. An easy way to flip off your filters is to go back, flip off not as in like the finger, but to turn them off is to go back to your folder view and just click this and it'll bring up all your originals again and turn off the filters. Okay, so you can do that. You can also click all photographs right there as well. So what I can do is go and select children's photos. So these five, and with it selected, I can press control, or I'm sorry, I think it's shift K. Yeah, shift K and it'll actually assign that selected keyword, children's portraits, to these images. Once again, I find it easier to use the spray paint tool just because, well, I like working with that method over doing this because I have to keep going through and pressing Shift K every time I find these images. And then I have to keep switching out 
that set keyword shortcut versus with a, a, a spray bank spray painter, I can select them all and simply change to a different keyword and do that again. But that's yet another way you can use to apply keywords. One last thing that I wanted to show you, which is just simply advanced filtering. You can filter by one or more attributes. So when you select text, well, it brings up the text window here, but there's other options. So for example, I can bring up attributes and I can now add, I can say filter by the 12 and anything else I select, it adds yet another filter to the filters. Now, if I have no images uh, with a flag, then it gives me no images. But if I say, well, the one image that I want to keep in this grouping was the raw file. So which one of these was the raw? Well, let's show our film strip just so we can see it. Okay, so this one was the raw file. So I'm going to set this one as my flag. So by pressing P, by the way. Now, if I choose that filter, you can see now it shows me this one image. This is the 12 and it's the one image that I want to keep. There's also other options in here and these are pretty simple. You can filter by ratings, you can filter by color. But one of the things you might look over is the operator right here. This operator will allow you to filter by ratings that is greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, or equal to. So if you want to look by a certain star rating, you can. But I'm just going to say greater than or equal to zero stars, which basically shows you everything. You can also filter by a color or multiple colors. We could also turn on additional metadata to filter by. If we want to filter and look for file types, or let's say we want to filter by uh, camera serial number, we can actually choose, like say fitness, and it'll tell us the different file types available, the different camera serial numbers available. We can choose multiple labels to look for. Okay, one of the cool filter that I haven't shown you guys yet is under attributes. You actually have under kind the option to be able to filter by master photos virtual copies and videos. So virtual copies are the virtual copies that we made of an image. We can actually filter by those or we can filter by just master copies. That's totally fine too. So it's kind of nice if all your virtual copies are the images that have something applied to them, you can find all the virtual copies. You can modify them, delete them, apply a keyword, whatever you'd like. And then one of my other favorite labels to filter by is, for example, if I'm looking for all of just Maybe I want to find a landscape image that's a certain aspect ratio. Watch this. I'm going to go under text. And let's say that I have already set landscape as my keyword for several images. I can type in landscape. Turn on the attributes. I'm sorry. Turn on the metadata. Under metadata, you can go down here to aspect ratio and actually see which images were shot as portrait or landscape images which is freaking cool. And by the way, as you work down, so as I've selected this, now it adds that filter in addition to whatever else I choose here. So if, as I add additional filters, this is landscape images, and now I can say landscape images that are raw files. And then I can say landscape images that are raw files that are shot at, well, a certain ISO. These are all 100 ISO. Let's find something else, focal lengths. These are all landscapes shot raw, at 16 millimeters, whereas these are landscapes at raw at 17 millimeters. So every one of these things that we add on builds on, you can add up to four different labels to filter by in addition to attributes, text, and so forth. So filtering is incredibly powerful. And just remember that you can filter by multiple options and set multiple labels at once. Using filtering along with keywording properly, it's all you need to organize an entire catalog, an entire catalog of perpetual images well enough that you can find anything at any time with a couple clicks, even if you have 20,000 plus images in there. That's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you all enjoyed and hopefully you saw why it was such an important one. Let's go on to the next video.